Brilliance Audio presents The Rope by Nevada Barr, performed by Joyce Bean. Regis Kander took a swig of his beer and watched his neighbor, Jenny Gorman. She was sitting on the other picnic table, her feet on the bench, smoking a cigarette as Gilbert and Dennis swaggered into the square of grass and trees fenced in by seasonal housing. Park employee housing at the Rope was set out in two neat quads, two-bedroom duplexes on each of the sides surrounding squares of defiantly green grass with four locust trees only slightly taller than Regis and not yet as big around as his wrist. One square was for NPS seasonals, the other for concessions workers, kids that pumped fuel and sucked crap out of the houseboats and made dangling dogs at the Dangling Rope Marina snack bar. The duplexes didn't blend into the red, roan, rust, buff motif of Lake Powell, they were painted the same dead gray as the marina. Regis figured maintenance got a good deal on gray paint. Gil and Dennis were college boys from Pennsylvania who'd come to Lake Powell to work on their tans and get laid. When they weren't absorbed in one of those pastimes, or both simultaneously, if Dennis was as much of an outdoorsman as he claimed, they did maintenance work. Regis watched them flop bonelessly down, Gilbert next to Jenny, Dennis at her feet, arms thrown along the table. Both were covered in dust and sweat and, no doubt, wouldn't shower until Ms. Gorman had every opportunity to be impressed with their machismo. Hey, guys, she said, blowing out a lungful of smoke. Hey, they answered in unison. Heckle and Jekyll, clowns. Jenny Gorman looked like the girl next door every boy wishes lived next door. Dark, wavy hair, big hazel eyes, a well-cut mouth, and enormous tits. Jenny was used to being ogled, Regis guessed. In high school, she must have had to wave high at breast level when she met guys. That's where they would have been looking. Gil and Dennis still were. Regis didn't think the breasts were implants. Plastic never moved like real flesh and blood. Corman didn't flaunt her body, but he'd seen her flash a little cleavage to get some idiot to fall off his water skis or drive his boat into the dock. Serve the fool's right, he thought, and took another pull on his Dos Equis. Evenings at Dangling Rope were Regis's favorite part of his job. It was as close to being a kid at camp as a grown man could get and not be arrested. His peers, permanent park employees, whined too much about pay, promotion, retirement. Seasonals, no matter what their age, exuded a sense of childlike freedom, as if they were actors in an old movie, and any day now they were going to get their big break. Being around seasonals made him feel like a wise old man, though he'd not yet turned thirty. Thirty was year after next. He pushed that thought away. Forty wasn't the new thirty, and thirty was the start of forty. Forty was the start of skin sagging, breasts sagging, scrotum sagging, Lines and fat and receding hair. Thirty had one upside. At thirty, he'd be a rich man. If he fulfilled all the old horror's requirements. But first, Bethy, his wife of at least two more years, came out of their side of the duplex, a casserole dish in her oven-mitted hands. Hash brown casserole, all cheese and butter and potatoes. Four years of marriage and his wife's bottom was spreading big time. To be fair, the weight gain wasn't entirely her fault, but Regis wasn't in the mood to be fair. When they met, she was a seasonal interpreter at Rainbow Bridge. She'd been thin and athletic in those days, canyoneering on her days off. Regis had loved watching her cute little behind bobbing ahead of him in the slots, and he'd needed a wife— so he'd followed that taut, flexing little gluteus maximus right to the altar. Bethy's charm, other than the tight ass and the convenience, was the gypsy lifestyle she promoted that summer, the sense of a life full of possibilities. The fantasy Bethy. As soon as she had the ring on her finger, she changed back to the real Bethy. Two more years, Regis told himself. Two more years and a lot more drugs. <laughs>